Welcome to the sequencing circles tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to sequence circles. So to do that, we got to get some circles on the screen. So I'm going to click on the tools menu and select layout. And in the layout dialog box, we want to change number of CCRs to four because I'm going to do four circles. And light type is still CCRs. Ribbon orientation horizontal works best. Ribbon shape is circle. Ribbon length is full. Location of ribbon controllers does not matter. So here we have our four circles. And if we click on these pixels in the uh, sequencing rows, we'll see that the first pixel is over here on the left edge of the circle. And if we keep selecting, you can see the pixel just keep going around the circle so that the last pixel is right there and so that means that the wires from your controller are going to come right here on your circle and that's the start of the CCR and it's going to go around like that and you're going to do that the same way for all four of the circles they're all the same way um, the second row from the bottom is the second circle the third row from the bottom is the third circle and the fourth row from the bottom is the fourth circle and uh, I've had some people tell me that's the opposite of what they expected that they figured these rows should be ordered just the opposite and there are reasons why I have it ordered the way it is uh, one reason is that I want the sequences to play back the same whether these uh, sequencing rows are oriented vertically or horizontally and the other thing is I, I want a fixed layout so that everybody's sequences get played back the same on everybody's computer if I let some people reverse the order of these then uh, the sequences wouldn't all be the same and when I um, sold my sequences then uh, you know the sequences you get from me they wouldn't play back the same on everybody's uh, CCRs so that's why I'd like everybody to set their CCRs up the same way here so that's uh, enough about the layout to, to press on uh, about sequencing these things the uh, the morphs are the most interesting thing to uh, do on the circles I'll I've brought up the morph dialog box the 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 default uh, time length on the tail is one second. I'm going to reduce that to a half second for the purpose of this tutorial. Click on Add, and we've got the default morph up here. And he goes from the start of all four sequencing rows to the end of all four sequencing rows. If we play him, we'll see that that's just uh, one revolution around each one of the circles. And I'm going to uh, change the play speed to one half so that we can see things better and I'm going to shorten uh, the length of this effect to be a half second so that I can fit more effects on the screen here because my screen resolution is is low here because uh, that's because of YouTube videos uh, they, they just have a lower resolution so I've got to scrunch everything down anyway if we play him it's going to do the same thing and uh, if we wanted to do a, a re one revolution around one circle, we would just uh, change the morph to go uh, from the start of this sequencing row to the end of that sequencing row. Click on Modify in the Morph Setup dialog box. And if we play that, then we get one circle around, or one revolution around the first circle. And if I want two revolutions I just copy paste we play that and we get one two revolutions and if I wanted four I could just copy paste that and then we get four revolutions now that was easy to do and that's pretty cool but uh, what most people want to do is the weaving pattern I call it where you start here and you weave up and down uh, through the circles It'd be nice if you could do that with one morph, but you can't. You've got to split it into four separate morphs. And the first one is going to go from here to here. 
which means we go from the start of the first row to the middle of the first row. Um, I click on modify and the second portion of the weave, remember this is the first one, we go from there to there. The second one goes from here to here. Now remember each one of these circles uh, starts at this edge, goes around and ends back where it started and that means if we want to go from here to here we've got to start at the end and go to the middle. So on the se second sequencing row I'm going to mark the start at the end there and go back to the middle. We click on modify and now for the third segment this is the first, second, third segment is right here we we start at the beginning and go to the middle so on the third row from the bottom we start at the beginning and end in the middle click on modify and for the fourth segment it's going to go from here to here and again that means we go from the end back to the middle so on the fourth row we start at the end and go back to the middle modify now if I did that right let's uh, play this and we should get our weave pattern okay good we we did that now the next thing that's cool is to start a weave going the opposite direction with a different color and then when they meet they mix um, so I'm going to select all four of these, copy, and scroll over, and, and paste that. And I want to change their color. We can double click on this and that changes uh, all the controls. That's a little trick to know. Uh, instead of clicking individually on these, you can just double click here and it changes the first three colors and it leaves the last one black because that's normally what you want to do so I just change that to green I say group modify OK and all four of the morphs change to green and it's still the same pattern of course from left to right so now to change the pattern we can use a new group modify feature that is in uh, 3.9 and later versions of the software and uh, that that version actually hasn't come out at, at yet um, at, at the time of the recording of this tutorial but it'll come out around around Thanksgiving time of 2012 so anyway this new feature is that uh, we can click on group modify and say move endpoints and click on the reverse direction uh, box there and say OK and now what that has done is changed the direction of each one of these morphs. Remember this first one used to go from here to here. Well now it goes from there to there. So if we play this it'd be nice if it reversed the direction of our weave but it doesn't. It just it, it does that. It reversed the direction of each individual morph but to change the direction of the weave we have to also reverse the order of the morphs. So that means this last guy is now first and this guy has to be second. Cut him paste. This guy has to be third. Paste. And this guy has to be fourth. Paste. So let's select all these guys and get the screen back here and use nudge to scoot them over and now if we play these now we have the weave going the reverse direction so we can cut that and go back to the beginning and paste and now we have them uh, on top of each other and so if we play them they will go at the same time and sure enough, they mix and form yellow and different shades of orange. And uh, that's what we get. Let's play it again. That's pretty cool. 
Okay, so that's a really cool effect, but I'm the first one to admit that uh, it's it's sort of difficult. Uh, you have to do some mental gymnastics in your mind to imagine where all these little half segments need to go. Um, there is an easier way. The uh, on on every download there is a sample visualization file with the circles uh, mapped to the sequencing grid in a different way. To access that, you just click on File, Open, and like I said, this is on everybody's computer. It's a sample file. Uh, the the, the, the uh, default directory is the Superstar Sequences directory when you want to open up in a sequence, and there is a Samples directory off of there. We double-click on Samples and look for the file Viz Circles 4. We open that. And ask us if we want to save that, sure. And now it has opened up this uh, Viz Circles 4 sequence and it uses a uh, visualization file. And to get it so we can see the whole thing, I'm going to click on View. And if we do that, it, it remaps it to fit the screen. And so now we see all four circles and it has mapped them to two sequencing rows and each sequencing row is a hundred uh, pixels long and these green lines are where it had found rows of fixtures and in in this visualization file that I created um, I have the circles split up into a top half and a bottom half and so it has put the bottom half of all the circles on the bottom sequencing row and the top half of all these circles on the top sequencing row. If we click on here, you can see that that's the bottom half of the circle. And if you keep going, it's still the bottom half of that circle. And if you select the whole thing, that's the bottom half of all the circles. And so conceptually what I've done is taken the bottom half of the circles and just scrunched it down into a straight line. and uh, same thing with the top half. So what does that mean when you sequence? Uh, it actually means that uh, doing a circle around uh, one of the CCRs is more difficult. If we scroll to the right here you can see there are some effects in this sample file. I'm going to select this first one and scoot him over because I only want to play him for right now. Um, and if we if we play him, what you get is just a morph going from left to right, um, bouncing along the circles. Um, that that was very different than uh, the the morph we had in the other mode where that caused a circle to go around each CCR and it means that if we want to do a revolution around one circle you have to do it in two halves you have to go around the top half and then you have to come around the bottom half so you see conceptually these these little grids are this the first circle and the the circle has been squashed down to be two flat lines and so if you want this shows four circles and it required eight morphs to do that so this layout makes doing one circle around one CCR more difficult but it makes the weave pattern much easier conceptually if we play this that is our weave pattern and it still took four morphs to do it but the first morph was the top half the circle, here's the bottom half the circle, top half the circle, bottom half the circle. So you see we just weaved up and down and that was much easier to conceptualize. So let's play the rest of this uh, sample file. Rear, 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 and then it comes down and then it does those two like that. And here's what we did in the previous example we do from the left, we do it from the right, then it does them together and they mix. So 
that's uh, I think it's much easier to do and if you're going to sequence circles I would encourage you to use this uh, visualization if you if you wanted to use the visualization without using this sample sequence file you just go file import visualization and um, however if, if you do do it this way you have to remember that the you, you change the max length to 100 it's already set to 100 because these the sample file set it to that for us but uh, change the max length to to 100 click on OK and in uh, the default directory for visualizations is the visualizations editor directory uh, go down to the samples directory and look for circles for dot lee and that will import we didn't see anything change because that was already the the visualization file that we had that will import that file and you will get this screen without any of the effects up there and so I would encourage you to use that for your sequences and if you're curious I have the uh, if I minimize this I have the uh, visualizer open here and to look at that file you just say file open and uh, he was already in the samples directory but in, on your computer it'll come up in the visualizations editor directory and you will have to double click on samples and in there look for the circles for dot lee file open that and here you can see the visualization there are two props this prop is the top half of the circles and this prop is the bottom half of the circles and in each prop there are four fixtures and you can see each circle has been split into two halves so that they can be uh, put into two different props. Now realize that all I have done by doing this is change the way the pixels on the CCRs get mapped to the sequencing row in uh, Superstar. I did not change the way you set up the CCRs on your actual layout. You do not have to cut your CCRs in half. You still uh, start them here, make a complete revolution, and end them here. And you do that the same for every CCR. I can't emphasize that enough. Don't think that this means you have to chop your CCR in half. I just chopped the visualization in half so that it would map to the sequencing rows differently and also realize that when you use a visualization it a superstar gets the um, unit ID information from the visualization if we double click on this fixture we'll see that it says he's on the regular network uh, with a unit ID of 01 you could go change that to whatever unit ID you're using and then superstar will use that you could change it to 4 now if you did that remember that that just changes the top half now we have to select the bottom half of the fixture you see I've told him he starts at pixel 26 and goes from there and uh, we change the top half to unit ID 4 so we need to change him to unit ID 4 and as soon as you do that and you save that file and then import it into Superstar he will use unit ID 4 for this first circle and you could go change the unit ID to any of these circles to anything you want when you're in uh, in those fixed CCR modes that we used at the first part of this tutorial uh, you have to uh, you, you set the unit IDs uh, differently in Superstar you, you set them in the configuration dialog box but um, for a visualization file it gets all the configuration information from the visualization file so and, and also if you just have two circles then you could go and delete uh, two of the circles here and save the file to a different name and import that so I think that's all I want to cover in this tutorial uh, that should give you a good start and make it a lot easier to sequence your circles thank you for listening and have a super day